morning and welcome. I'm Karen Cooper, Vice President for University Advancement, and it is my privilege to welcome you to the dedication of the Science and Innovation Center. In a year filled with uncertainty, we come together today to celebrate this milestone in our history, this moment in which we move forward with absolute certainty into a new era of innovation in the sciences at Riviera University. Today we celebrate the completion of our newest academic center, this 36,000 square foot facility dedicated to scientific inquiry and discovery. Today we celebrate the many people who made this dream possible, those whose leadership set the course for our bold future, those whose talents and dedication moved this project forward brick by brick, and those who will be transformed by the teaching and learning that will take place inside these walls. We are joined by members of the Board of Trustees, sisters, alumni, friends, faculty, staff, and students, and I'd like to recognize several individuals as we start our program. The president of Riviera University, Sister Paula Marie Buley. <laughs> Provincial superior of the Sisters of the Presentation of Mary, Sister Helen Cody. <laughs> Vice chair of our board of trustees, the Honorable Joseph LaPlante. Members of our board in attendance, Michael Corradi, Daniel Sauvageau, Dr. Cecilia Stopis, William Barry, and Sister Janice Peralt. We are pleased to be joined by New Hampshire State Senator and alumnus, the Honorable Lou D'Alessandro. The mayor of our city of Nashua, the Honorable Jim Donchus. Our former mayor and friend, the Honorable Donna Lee Lozo. In a very special way, I would like to acknowledge all of the university's generous and visionary benefactors, those in attendance today and those who are unable to join us. As we fulfill our Vision 2020, we do so with you proudly by our side. To each and every benefactor, we thank you for your partnership, and we know that we can't do it without you. As we begin our program, we will start with our invocation and blessing. Please welcome Sister Helen. Thank you, Karen. It is an honor to be here for this long-awaited event the dedication of the Science and Innovation Center. The notable scientist Carl Sagan believed that science is a way of thinking much more than a body of knowledge. So when way of thinking is partnered with the term innovation, which is defined as the act of introducing something new, while well, the, the possibilities are truly endless. To have one's thinking challenged and expanded, to be encouraged to look for what lies beyond what is already known, this is what the sisters who came before us always hoped for. I can't help think but Sister Claire Bilo, who taught for years in Mendel Hall the science building that served on this very site. I think also of Marie Rivier, Madeline of Jesus, Sylvia Trottier, and so many others. They were innovative thinkers, women who would delight in seeing this center. How odd they would be, as many of us have been, to walk these halls and to see the new advances in technology. And so today, as we dedicate this building, we honor them and all who have worked to make this day possible, and we pray for God's blessings. We pray, first and foremost, for the building itself, that it may fulfill its purpose. We know thanks to the blasting of so much ledge, that it is indeed built on solid ground. <laughs> but we pray that its cornerstone 
will be Jesus Christ, and that it will be grounded in the values taught by Jesus, and that all that happens within these walls will be for the good of humanity and the good of Review. May God's protection be on this building. We pray for Sister Paula and her talented team and for the many people who worked with them to enable this building to become a reality. For those who planned, who shaped, who made financial contributions, who guided, who built, May God's blessings be upon each one of you as you continue to make our world a better place. We pray for all who today and tomorrow will teach, research, coordinate, and plan in this building. The task of shaping future leaders is one of immense importance. May God's blessing be upon you, and may you always find delight in what you do. We pray for each and every student who will ever grace these halls, that their enthusiasm for learning will not ever wane, that they will never take for granted the opportunities offered to them here. May God's blessings be upon you as you embrace science and innovation as a way of life. We pray for all essential personnel who will work in this space, assuming their responsibility in maintaining both inside and outside, keeping it safe and clean. Your role, while often hidden, is more important than ever. May you be blessed abundantly for your care and tireless efforts. And lastly, we pray, Lord, it has been said, first we form our buildings, and then our buildings form us. We pray that this building will be a place where lives are formed in transforming hearts and minds to serve the world so that both those who teach and all who learn here will become people who reflect your goodness, your compassion and love, both here and everywhere they go. To this end, O oh God, with gratitude and thanksgiving, we give this building over to your work and your purposes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Helen. Please welcome our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Brian Ernsting. Thank you, Karen, and good morning, everyone. On behalf of the faculty, it is my privilege to welcome you today to the dedication of Riviera University's Science and Innovation Center. 36,000 square feet, state-of-the-art classrooms and labs. And look around you. It's beautiful. A welcoming place for our whole community. This building, years in the planning and construction, now becomes a physical embodiment of our mission to transform hearts and minds to serve the world. Many of you know that I arrived just as the new, uh, as the new academic vice president, just uh, in time to move in to the Science and Innovation Center. And as we worked in the old laboratories to decide what to move and pack them up, I was moved to recall my own journey. In 1997, 23 years ago. I was a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Michigan, uh, one of the premier life science research institutions uh, in the country and indeed the world. 
Um, Francis Collins had been uh, uh, cloning genes and discovering the skills that it would take to soon sequence the human genome. Uh, Jack Dixon was uh, rooting out the ways that cells talk to each other uh, and, and understanding the cancerous transition. To say that the University of Michigan was well-funded was an understatement. My part of it, the medical science research complex, was vast and well-equipped. Then I showed up at the University of Evansville as a new faculty member. And I moved into my own office and lab in Cook Center. Now, I never got to see Mendel Hall, and maybe that's a good thing, but I saw Cook Center. And when I showed up there from the University of Michigan, I couldn't help but think, wow, oh, what happened? <laughs> but it was okay because I knew that a new science facility was uh, in the planning stages and about to become real. And in Cook Center, in 2000, uh, in the year 2000, we moved into that renovated uh, Cook Center. And it was amazing. It changed everything. It changed the way we talk to prospective students. You see, before, in the old space, we'd welcome high school students in and they would kind of look over at their mom or their dad and say, hey, wow, uh, the high school labs are maybe nicer than what I'm seeing in that old space. And we said, oh yeah, we understand, it's really all about the faculty, but that just wasn't the most satisfying answer that we could tell. The new space changed the way prospective students saw us. They were amazed when they walked into the space, and they were excited and empowered by the idea that they could be working in those labs. And then that promise was realized as they joined us for four years of an amazing education. We sequenced DNA, we discovered new species, we tracked pollutants through the environment and developed mitigation plans, we pioneered new organic synthesis techniques. Just amazing, all because of the new space. I wasn't expecting, but this was very real. It changed how we thought about ourselves. When we went from, well, we can't and we don't and we wish, to we can. And we do, and you will, and we'll do it together. It changed the whole community, energizing us, and really just making it a much better place. So I've seen the transformative power of new facilities, and I can't wait to be a part of that transformation at Riviera University. To those of you who planned and built this facility, and to those of you who supported this work with your gifts, thank you. I hope that you are as pleased with the result as I am. Now, I would like to introduce Kaylee Pozo. Kaylee is a biology major from the class of 2022. She is a student senator, an RA, and the vice president of the Multicultural Student Organization. Kaylee? time flies when you're having fun is greatly unrest. He never truly acknowledged how fast time flies until we're forced to look upon upon memories that show up from previous years on Facebook, Snapchat, or conversations that come up with old friends. The past three years that I spent at Riviera have been nothing short of a move. I've been able to witness new additions being added to our campus, such as the Linda Robinson Pavilion, the Joanne Merrill Field, Greater Diamond, the Science and Innovation Center, and our newest addition, the Ice Hockey. Began my journey at Riviera in April of 2018 when I committed to the university. I remember sitting in Memorial Hall during Acceptance Students Day when Sister Paula had announced her plans for the building that we're currently standing in. The incoming class at the time, class of 2022, had gotten a look at what Vision 2020 would look like, and to tell you that we were all in love would be an understatement. We're all sitting at the edge of our seats as we viewed the blueprints. At the time, the year 2020 had seemed so far away, but the wait was very much worth it. The next two years flew by as we worked diligently in Memorial, Education, and Sylvia Trottier Hall, awaiting our newest addition. We said goodbye to Mendel Hall in October of 2018 and welcomed the, the groundbreaking of the Science and Innovation Center with open arms, anticipating the year 2020. We watched in awe as our lovely crew worked day after day, rain or shine, placing every piece exactly where it needed to be, and before you know it, the building had come together. In March 2020, we were sent home due to COVID-19. It was very heartbreaking to have to pack our bags and say goodbye to each other, but also to say goodbye to our beautiful campus that we call home. 
I think we can all agree that COVID-19 had us all questioning about what our next steps would be and how we would move forward from this. We went remote until May 2020 and then welcomed summer break with big smiles and open arms, but that doesn't compare to the biggest welcome we received at the end of July when Riviera had announced that we would be able to return for the fall semester and, they, and that we would open the doors to the Science and Innovation Center. Vision 2020 had finally become our reality. When something you have anticipated has finally come to pass, it leaves you stunned. Our palms were sweaty, your heart gets faster and faster because what you've dreamed of is finally standing right in front of you. When I had stepped into the Science Center during RA training in August, I was quick to shed a silent tear. The building was perfect. Huge windows, brand new technology, new labs, and more space, a building designed specifically for the science. With this innovation in the sciences, we as students have the advantage and are one step ahead of the game we will be better equipped to go out into the world and exceed in the careers of our choosing, such as biotechnology, nursing, medicine, and more by being able to further our research and use technology. We will be better equipped now that we have been exposed to a great opportunity. It is truly an honor to be able to further my education at a place such as Riviera. The past three years have passed very quickly. I can't believe that I'll be moving on to my next journey in May 2020. It's gone by so fast, May of 2022. It's gone by so fast. I would like to thank our advisors and faculty who have contributed to our education by continuously pushing us to be better. To you, I say thank you. And to everyone who contributed to making Vision 2020 a reality, thank you. It is because of you and your efforts that we as students have an opportunity to continue to achieve Altiora and Meliora, higher and better. Thank you. Thank you to both Dr. Ernsting and Kaylee. While the world is our classroom, we are proud to call Nashua our home, and we are fortunate to always have the support of our city and its leadership. Please welcome Mayor Donches. Well, it is my pleasure to be here today with uh, many dignitaries, uh, but I wanted to mention a few. First, my predecessor, Donna Lee Lozo, I didn't catch where she is, but she, I know, is very dedicated to Riviera University, so we're glad to have her. I wanted to mention uh, my friend Lou D'Alessandro from Manchester, a state senator, formerly an executive counselor, but today, very important because he was president of Daniel Webster College when it was a successful nonprofit institution, and if we'd been able to persuade him to stay, uh, I'm sure uh, Daniel Webster would have uh, ended up as successful as Riviere is today. And finally, uh, of course, Sister Paula, whose vision and charisma has transformed and will continue to transform, I am sure, Riviere University. Uh, she has brought so much to the campus, so much to the city. Of course, she's supported by the trustees and the board of directors, but really, I think it's Sister Paula's vision and energy uh, and dedication that is really uh, making Riviera University the place that uh, it is today, which is um, very, very impressive. And of course, this facility is uh, just symbolic of that. Speaking of this facility, it is a state-of-the-art facility which will expand Riviere University's contribution to the life sciences, to the workforce throughout New Hampshire and our region. This, of course, means that more men and women entering life science fields, more research, more discovery, and as the title of the building suggests, more innovation. Biology, biotechnology, and environmental science among the regions which are among the region's expanding jobs, job sectors, Riviere consistently responds to the needs of the business and the industries throughout our city and our state. This support of workforce development will also add significant contributions to the significant contributions that Riviere makes each year to our nursing workforce educating the largest number of nurses throughout the state of New Hampshire. The university's education of nursing and public health professionals is critical to our state and our region. Riviera alumni are on the front lines, especially now during the 
COVID-19 pandemic in protecting and serving Nashua and many other communities in our region. Now this new facility, located right here at the crossroads of the campus, will be another significant contribution and another community resource for the city of Nashua. And the city looks forward to opportunities for partnership with our Nashua schools. Since Riviere became a university in 2012, Riviere has raised its profile significantly throughout, our, throughout New England, both in terms of campus improvements, global engagement, and service initiatives, through community partnerships and a lot more. Nashua and our citizens, our residents, are proud to be the home city of a university like Riviera that consistently and innovates while remaining true to its mission of transforming hearts and minds to serve, to serve the world. So I'm very glad to be with you today. And um, I'm amazed, and I'm sure we all are, by what uh, the university has been able to produce here at the uh, Science and Innovation Center. So with that, I'd like to introduce Riviere's leader, visionary, uh, Sister Paula. So I'm going to leapfrog Sister Paula here just for a minute. <laughs> uh, my name is Joel LaPlante. I'm the vice chair of the Board of Trustees. Um, and it's my honor and my privilege and actually really my pleasure to represent the Board of Trustees this wonderful day. I do think it's a wonderful day. I'm a Nashua native, I love the snow. Uh, I, ho I hope every, I know everybody doesn't feel the same way, but I can't help uh, but be happy on a day like today. Um, it took a lot of study, a lot of deliberation, um, a lot of what we call due diligence on the part of the Board of Trustees, but the Board of Trustees fully supports uh, and shares the administration's recognition of the need for this wonderful facility, the Science and Innovation Center. It's, um, and if anybody had any doubt, Kelly, your words um, are very welcome, very um, reassuring, and um, I'm so grateful you're here to share that with us today, and the enthusiasm of the student body uh, for this Innovation Center. My, my role on the Board of Trustees has primarily been recruiting, recruiting more trustees to help serve. Um, and there's two things I always stress when I do that. First is what a, an asset, a crucial asset, Riviere University is to the city, to the region, to New England. Uh, indispensable, and it's not, just because, it's not just because we no longer have Daniel Webster, but because of the unique role Riv plays in our community. And that unique role is the other thing I stress all the time. What occurs here is that never-ending drumbeat, that never-ending pursuit of that dialogue between faith and reason. Faith and reason in pursuit of knowledge, truth, and human flourishing. Um, and I think, I, I think it takes institutions like RIV, buildings like this, to remind us sometimes of the importance of that dialogue between faith and reason, again, in pursuit of those important values. And this building will be part of RIV's continuing effort to recruit the type of students and the type of faculty who want to undertake that dialogue between faith and reason, again, in pursuit of knowledge, in pursuit of truth, and in pursuit of human flourishing. I really can't resist saying this when we're speaking about human flourishing. Um, as a native Nashuan, and all the Nashuans in the, in the room here share this, we had a scare a few weeks back when we learned our mayor had contracted uh, the virus. And it is one, I just have to remark, it's wonderful to see him so obviously strong, healthy, and flourishing. So, there you go. It really is wonderful to see you, Jim. When I started as a lawyer in 1990, um, I worked for a law firm. Jim is one of the partners there, and he's one of the people, one of several people who helped train me in the practice of law. And it's always been very special to run into him and always encounter him at so many important events like this. 
I promise to be super brief because the person that you really want to hear, who Jim referred to as the person with the vision and the charisma is next, well, I'll just leave you with that. Um, and always remember that that pursuit is what happens here at RIV, and that's why RIV is so indispensable to our city, our region, in my view, our country and the world. Next, the university president, Sister Paula Marie Buley. Good morning, everyone. The book of Proverbs tells us that an enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. Today, we celebrate the wise planning of our board of trustees and the generosity of our donors, many of whom join us today. We reflect on the role of the Catholic intellectual tradition, the tradition of faith and reason, science and discovery, brought to this campus by Sister Sylvia Trottier, Sister Claire Billiou, but also fostered down through the years as we remember Sister Christilla, Sister Jacqueline LeBlanc, Sister Rosine, Rose Pasteur, and sisters who join us today, including Sister Monique and our professors, Richard Harrington and Bert Dufault. Welcome to this day of celebration. We acknowledge the gifts of creativity and imagination, the craft of construction, and the foresight to anticipate new ways of visual learning. So please welcome today our university partners in the planning, design, and construction of the Science and Innovation Center. To Mr. Steve Sproles, principal, and Tim Manis, senior project architect of Dirk and Edson. And you're welcome to wave. <laughs> to Lars Traffy and Joe and uh, president of Hutter Construction, who served as our general contractor. To Stuart Randall, principal of Communication Design Associates. To Dana Barron, chief executive officer of HB Communications. To Joe Riley and Dave Mermelstein, chief operating officer and senior project manager for the Trident Group, construction managers. To Kirsten Holmes, principal and executive producer of Trivium Interactive, our video wall design partners. And to the university's campus-wide technology partner, Mr. Chris Davia of Elucian. So let's recognize them for a moment. Well, let me say that Bricks have mortar, paper has glue, and wood has nails. So let me acknowledge the home team that so many of you know and work with every day who supported this project before the first shovel went into the ground. Rick Perrine, Director of Facilities. Althea Whalen, Assistant Director of Facilities. Heidi Crow, Riviere's Chief Information Officer, and Karen Cooper, Vice President for University Advancement. Let's hear it for the home team. <laughs> Today's enthusiasm is not merely based on the completion of this project. It is amplified and energized as we anticipate a future full of promise. Today, Riviere recommits its resources to the work of understanding the natural world, whether it's the vastness of the planets or the process of cell mitosis. Through the generous estate gift of Vivian Cunha, the class of 1965, I am delighted to announce today 
the Biology Intubators Grant of $350,000, which will be distributed to our students majoring in biology and biotechnology. And so for the vision <laughs> and the foresight of Vivian, we are truly grateful. Our university's core mission of transformation are values of innovation, collaboration, integrity, service, and faith, and a motto that has sustained us down the years, Altiora at Meliora, higher and better, brings us to this new era. It is a moment of gratitude and expectation that as we cut this ribbon, the promise of science innovation on our campus will truly enrich the world. And so may I ask our stage party to join me at the ribbon with scissors that were designed to be socially distant. 